Good morning, everyone. This morning, we will be together for approximately 45 minutes, and we will be discussing an important strategy and an innovative way to significantly increase your donation dollars and maximize your philanthropy. For anyone sitting on the fence who may be thinking that flow through shares are something new and untested or risky, such as crypto or things like that, today's presentation will show you that in fact flow through shares have been around for many years. At the Jewish Foundation, we received our first gift in 2007, some 15 years ago. And we have since worked with hundreds of donors who have donated millions of dollars using flow through shares. Many donors continue to benefit by amplifying their gift in a tax advantageous strategy. Quite simply, the strategy has allowed donors to donate much more to charity or it has cost them less. We have two experts with us who will delve into the mechanics and tax benefits of flow through shares and how you can show you how you can leverage your charitable dollars to make them go further. I will be rounding out today's presentation with the advantages of giving through donor advised funds at a community foundation such as the Jewish Foundation of Greater Toronto. If you have any questions during the presentation, please enter in them in the Q&A. We may not get to all of them, but we'll do our best within the time constraints. With that, I am pleased to introduce our experts, Saul Plenner, private tax partner at PwC Canada, and Robin Turak, Vice President, Business Development, Petri Canada. Both Saul and Robin are members of the Jewish Foundation's Professional Advisory Committee, a dedicated group of advisors advocating for and working with their clients to structure gifts for the community through the Jewish Foundation. Over to you, Saul. Thanks, Janice, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, as Janice led off, we're here to talk to you about minimizing your after-tax cost of giving. And in today's world, giving is more important than ever before. I will be discussing with you the various structures that you can use for you and your family's philanthropic goals and how you can accomplish those. But before I do, I just want to share a little bit about my story. Philanthropy has been a very evolutionary process for me and my wife. We wanted our donation dollars to have an even greater impact than they do by just donating cash itself. And to do this, we started discussing what our goals, what our objectives would be and how we could accomplish those. We really started off with no strategy at all, no idea of what philanthropic goals we really wanted to achieve. We were often asked to give friends causes that they championed or to synagogues or anywhere in the community. But we were very much in a reactive state. We asked and we did our best to give. As we got more involved, we agreed that we wanted to do even more within the budget that we had set. And as we learned, as we networked, and as we met people like Robin and Janice, we developed our own strategy, our own goals, and our own objectives. Most important in our minds, we involved the entire family. We involved the kids and we discussed the importance of giving. And we also learned together that giving cash was great, but there's much more effective strategies out there on how to give. So there really are many different ways to give in many different forms. There really are no barriers. So cash is obviously the most popular one that most of us get into, but you can also gift securities, your public or private company shares. We'll go through that example. Uh, flow through shares, which is the main topic of today. But there's also other alternatives that you could use like life insurance or RSPs, et cetera. The, the point here I wanted to bring to your attention is every situation is different. Your individual circumstances have to be considered when making a donation and determining what the best strategy is for you. The after-tax cost of giving can range between five and 50% and sometimes actually lower than even that there are ways to minimize your donation dollars. So let's look at a couple of examples to drive home this point. In this chart, what we're trying to show you is what the after-tax cost of giving is. 
And it, in each of the three columns, we're focusing on getting to the charity $100,000. In the first column, the most common form is I'm making a donation to the charity of $100,000, a cash donation. And when I go to file my own personal tax return at the end of the year, I receive a donation tax credit. So my after-tax cost of donating through cash is a little bit less than $50,000, which is not bad at first glance. The second example is where you donate public company shares. And in this example, we're assuming a fair market value of $100,000. And we're also assuming a cost base of zero. So effectively, if you were to sell them on your own and keep the cash, you would have a $100,000 gain and you would pay tax on that gain. When you donate these shares to the charity, the first thing that happens is when you file your tax return, you get, again, a donation tax credit for $50,000 on that $100,000 donation of value. And the next thing that happens is I do not have to pay capital gains tax on that gift, on the gain on those shares. So I effectively save $26,000. At the end of the day, my actor my after-tax cost of this donation is just $22,000 or 22%. So I've really brought down in these two examples my cost of giving. The third example is what we're here to talk to you about today, the donation of flow-through shares. At the end of the day, as I go through this numbers, you'll see the charity is going to receive net proceeds of $100,000. In order to accomplish that, I'm purchasing flow through shares, and then I'm selling those shares on the same day. The net cost to me is $250,000. And Robin will go through a little bit more detail in explaining that number. But my next net cash cost is $250,000. CEE deduction is exploration expenses that the corporation that I'm investing in or I invested in is not taking and they're passing those expenses on to me so I can deduct them on my own personal tax return. And the tax savings linked to that deduction totals $218,000 or just over that. I also, as part of this transaction, get investment tax credits and there's also a repayment in the year afterwards of some of that amount. The net investment tax credit gain for me in filing the tax returns was $36,000. I also get a donation tax credit of $60,000. It's different than the first two columns, but that's just because of the mechanics of the transaction and what we're able to provide. So I spent 250 net at the beginning. I get three different tax deductions and the last point to consider here is I will have a capital gain on the sale of those shares. And I'll have to pay tax on those as a result. So when you add the pluses and minuses up in this example, my net cost of giving here is just under $10,000 or 9.95%, which if we compare it to the cash donation column, I'm effectively getting 10 times, sorry, five times the value or the charity is getting five times more than they would otherwise get. So if my intention at the end of the day was to donate $50,000 after taxes, then I can donate a lot more through flow through shares and the charities will then benefit. That's the guts of this discussion and slide. I do wanna reemphasize though that every situation is very different and you do have choices to make. And one example of that choice is, and I'm gonna go back to the capital gains column in this, choice, in this uh, chart. If you have net capital losses available for carry forward, you could apply those against that $74,000 capital gain cost. That then reduces your cost of giving even further. And in some cases could create a positive return at the end of the day on the purchase of flow through shares. Again, something that you'll want to consider 
when looking at your own specific situation. Wanted just to wrap up my section of this presentation by talking about how you create your own family legacy. As I said off the top, our family got together and we discussed what we wanted to achieve from a philanthropic perspective. We discussed what charities we wanted to support, what was important to not just my wife and I, but to our kids and where they wanted to start directing the funds of, of this, uh, of our foundation. With Robin, uh, sorry, with Janice's help, we set up a foundation and we've created what I believe is a family legacy to move forward with and hoping the kids will get more and more attached to the act of giving, the act of helping others and being in the community. So with that, let's get into a little bit more detail. And I'm gonna turn it over to Robin to take us through that now. Robin, over to you. Thank you, Saul. That is such a great personal story. It's an experience that my colleague Les Ross and I hear often from clients who have given more to their favorite charities using flow through shares. But before we start, I want to thank Janice Benatar and the Toronto Jewish Foundation for having us here today. They have been leaders in accepting and understanding flow through shares for donation purposes by many of us in this sector. So let's have a look at how the Pear Tree flow through donation platform can help your donation dollars go further by substantially reducing your after-tax cost of donation. Pear Tree Canada was founded over 15 years ago by Ron Birnbaum and Rini Bleeman, who many of you know as generous philanthropists in the community and through their various volunteer leadership roles. And Ron, of course, being a tax lawyer by profession. Offering a strategic approach through our unique flow-through donation platform, our sole business activity is helping individuals and Canadian corporations give more to their favorite charities by reducing their after-tax cost of donation. With 450 transactions complete, well over $2 billion in flow-through financing, and raising $300 million annually in financing for donation purposes, Pear Tree has enabled transformational giving while simultaneously funding job creation in our North. Okay, so how does it work? A flow through shares have been around since the 70s to encourage investment in the Canadian resource sector. A flow through share is a common share where the issuing resource company is obliged to spend the resource capital for exploration. The regime is only specific to Canada, but under Canadian tax law, the issuer flows through the tax deduction to the shareholder who bought the shares. In addition to the tax value, the common shares have market value, and it is the common share stripped of the tax attributes which are donated to a charity. So how does it benefit recipient charities? Well, according to 30 Years of Giving Canada by the Rideau Hall Foundation and Imagine Canada in 2018, among all the motivators for charitable giving, tax savings had the greatest impact on the dollar amount of donation. And that's the dollar amount. We help charities raise more because a reduced cost of giving for donors often results in increased gifts and a reduction of pledge periods. Pear Tree's proven format is widely accepted by wealth, tax, and legal advisors. And that's why over 5,000 charities across the country, from grassroots organizations to large institutions, donor advised funds and private foundations have received gifts enabled by Pear Tree. So what's the benefit for a donor? Well, the biggest advantage of course is the reduced after tax cost, cost of giving with no market risk. For an individual in Ontario, it is a 10% cost of giving. Corporate donors tend to 20% with passive and active income. And for Canadian controlled private corporations, the value add is a $2 addition to the capital dividend account for each dollar of donation. So what are the risks commonly asked? Well, what is the market risk? Will CRA accept this structure and will the resource company spend the money are the top three. And because the shares are sold to an end buyer on closing, there is no market risk for the donor or the charity. 
our format is governed by CRA advanced income tax rulings and due diligence by Pear Tree Security ensures the resource company has sufficient funds while just simply spending the money and has no issues with CRA. So Saul's slide showed the tax savings on a personal $100,000 donation comparing cash, securities, and a flow-through donation format. Here you see the acceleration that he described. If you look at a cash donation of 20,000, it has the same after-tax cost of giving as a $100,000 donation using a flow-through share format. So you can do the math on acceleration. But in order to achieve this, income and liquidity are required. Donors need sufficient income to deduct the tax benefits and are subject to AMT, alternate minimum tax. Cash is required to subscribe to the amount of shares needed, part of which comes back to you upon immediate sale to that end buyer. So let's quickly go through a high level summary taken from our full page illustration, which can be provided to anyone upon request. So starting with a donation amount of 100K at 9.95% after tax cost of giving, as Saul mentioned, the tax savings are from the Canadian exploration expenses, the CEE tax benefits, also exploration investment tax credits, the ITC benefits, the donation receipt, and he mentioned capital gains as flow through shares are always at a zero cost base. So keep in mind, this is a high level cash flow summary, a quick snapshot of a complete illustration that we provide you and your tax advisor with the full details to determine suitability. So when you start with a, a donation of 100,000 uh, to achieve a 9.95% cost of giving, your cash paid for your flow through share subscription is gonna be 408,000. The cash received immediately on sale of those shares back to you, net of financial services fees is gonna be 156 or close to 157. So your net cash position immediately post-closing is 251,000. Your tax savings in 2022 is 273,000, while your after-tax cash flow position is 21,000. Your tax payable in 2023, the following year, is going to be for the federal investment tax credit inclusion, which, going to, which is going to be 31,000. So your net out of pocket is going to be $9,952, but you will have made a donation of $100,000. Process is really simple. Once your tax advisor has determined suitability, clients can be in a non-binding queue for their donation amount in advance of a financing. When a new issue is announced, typically closing will be within two to three weeks with funds in trust three to four business days prior. In a same day transaction prearranged by Pear Tree, the client buys flow through shares and receives their applicable tax credits. The donor gifts the shares to any registered Canadian charity of choice. The charity then sells the shares to an institutional end buyer at a predetermined price, and the charity issues a donation receipt equal to the cash received on the sale of those shares. The charity is in full receipt of funds on closing. And closing books with all documentation are delivered to each client or their advisors. So combining the donation tax receipt and the flow through share tax credit, the after tax cost of giving is reduced from 50 cents on the dollar to 10 cents. Okay, so what are the next steps? Well, as Saul mentioned, planning is really important, but mostly planning takes time. So what we've found is the best thing to do is for a donor to review this with their tax advisor first in preparation for any upcoming transactions. We encourage you to go to our website, which is an exceptional resource for donor and advisor, providing the CRA advanced rulings, as well as all the technical interpretations. Janice, over to you. Thank you so much, Robin. As you heard, Robin represents Petri Canada, one of the institutions facilitating these gifts. There are other providers in the space, such as Bertov, Oberon, and Sprott, who can also facilitate such gifts and who we also have worked with. It is now my pleasure to talk to you about the Jewish Foundation. It is a jewel in the community, and we feel that um, it is a wonderful alternative to private foundations. What is 
what is a community foundation? We're one of the largest foundations in Canada. We have um, current and future assets of approximately $850 million, assets under management of 720 million approximately, and about 130 million of planned gifts, future gifts that we know about, gifts of life insurance, bequests in wills. Our foundation is comprised of about 1,200 fund holders. Each one of them have their own amount, some tens of thousands, some hundreds of thousands, some millions of dollars. We pool those funds together to maximize investment returns, to minimize fees. And each individual fund holder could be families, individuals, organizations, corporations. You each have your own account, your own fund. You get your own fund statement and you're able to distribute grants to charities of your choice. It's very similar to having a, a private foundation. You just don't have the burden of administering and managing and investing and complying with CRA and has become so much more popular over the last number of years. We've been around since 1937. Our growth has um, accentuated in the last 10 to 20 years. We've um, really grown and it's become so much more popular. There are many types of funds. We'll go into donor advised funds in a little bit more detail in a moment, but just to give you an idea, some donors open designated funds, funds that support a specific purpose, could be a particular charity or agency or several particular charities or agencies that will receive the funding on their own or automatically every year from their fund. Some open funds that support United Jewish Appeal, UJA's annual campaign, knowing that going into the future, generations to come, the, their gifts will be supporting the greatest needs in the community at that moment. Their youth funds for those under 25, very, very popular. People open funds for $500 for their children. Maybe it's a bar bat mitzvah, it's a simcha. They ask for gifts to go into a fund instead of having um, presents. Their temporary funds in memory or honor of people and organizations, Jewish organizations, other organizations that would prefer to focus their energies on their own missions, they can house their funds at the Jewish Foundation, utilize our expertise in investing, managing, and focus on their own mission. We have planned gifts here that many people open a fund in their lifetime or some wait until uh, just leave us a gift in their wills or life insurance or a registered plan upon passing um, the registered, the RRSP or RIF at the time, is the highest tax vehicle and a wonderful opportunity to get a tax, a tax receipt for your estate and leave much more to your family and of course to the community. Next slide, please. So here's a snapshot of the Jewish Foundation's um, financial highlights. As of today, currently we're around $725 million, but our fiscal year end is June 30th. So as of June 30th last year, we were at 659, over 659. We've shown um, we had an, an exceptional year last year. We had contributions into, into our existing funds or new funds opened of over 127 million. Our net rate of return for that fiscal year was 16.7%. And we made a difference in the community from all of our donors who have funds at the Jewish Foundation, choosing charities of their choice in excess of $40 million. Next slide, please. Our investment strategy is a diversified and conservative strategy. Our goal is not to earn the double digits we've seen recently. It's wonderful when we do, but our goal is to earn between six and 8%. We have lots of checks and balances in place to reduce volatility. It is community's money. So we want to make sure that we can do what we can to preserve the capital if that is the donor's choice, but our strategy is based on preserving the capital allowing for annual ongoing distributions, keeping up with inflation, and having a reserve buffer in each fund in case we do not have such um, high earning years. Next slide, please. Here's a snapshot of the last over 20 years of the Jewish Foundation's investment performance. As you can see, the dark blue is the Jewish Foundation and the, and the policy index is the gray. Um, over the long term, we're at 6.4%, which is right in line with what we, what we want, what we aim at. Um, we have 7.9% we have of a 10-year rate, 5-year five, five annualized rate is 8.8%, 3-year 7.5%, and very proudly 16.7% last fiscal year. Next slide, please. 
So I want to just focus a few minutes on donor advice funds. They, they are a fund, they, they are an alternative to a private foundation, as I mentioned earlier. There's no, there's no startup fees. You can start it with a minimum of $10,000 and all donations are fully tax deductible and any additional contribution are tax, tax deductible. Anyone can add to your fund. So you can open a donor advised fund quite modestly and have your own family foundation available to all your friends and family. If you have a simcha, you're having a, a wonderful occasion, um, you, can, you can let people know that they can add to your family foundation instead of giving you gifts. The flexibility of donor advised funds is probably the most attractive thing of the Jewish Foundation's uh, funds. We, we, we have them available for donors if they have a goal of keeping their family fund for generations to come. If you want to have your grow your family fund every year with additional contributions, with investment returns, and not dip into capital, we will guide you into what are the best distribution rates to best amount to distribute to charity annually. However, you have the ability to dip into capital and add to it, and it's a flexible, free fund for you to uh, manage. Worry-free, um, we will take care of reporting with CRA. You can choose as many charities to support in any given year. $100 is our minimum grant. You can do it throughout the year, and we offer a centralized one-stop shop. You'll get one tax receipt and you can support 100 different charities. Today's world with anonymity and privacy, this is one of the keys. We will preserve your privacy no matter what. No one will ever know how much is in your fund. If you go onto CRA and you type in anyone's name in the charities, um, charities page to see the private foundations, which they called private foundations, but they really come quite public. You can see the fund balance, you can see the trustees, you can see how much they give to every, every charity, you can even see how much they spend on professional fees. We will publicize the Jewish Foundation's collective assets, which is at the moment $725 million, but no one will ever know what's in your fund or who you give to. We will recognize you as much or as little as you want. Your recipient charities, you probably, most donors like the recipient charities to know where it comes from. We will send a letter that goes with each grant, letting them know who is getting their grant. But if you prefer complete anonymity, we will respect that too. We draft up a very simple standard donor agreement. It'll allow you to name your fund whatever you like. It'll allow you to name your fund advisors, your, you, your spouses, your children, some, advice, some include advisors, and it'll allow you to include succession, which is a really important thing because you don't want to burden your children. There are so many pr private foundations that have this worry at this moment, particularly as we enter the stage where there's this massive transfer of wealth going down to the next generation. And what will be? Will the children have the burden of having to administer and manage? The Jewish Foundation will allow you to appoint your children as fund advisors or successors. But you can also put in stipulations that 50% of the, of the distributable grants upon your passing will go to XYZ charity and 50% for your children to distribute, or the whole amount can be specifically designate, designated. So the, the uh, flexibility and the options are quite broad. Lastly, I want to cover philanthropic advisory services. We develop wonderful relationships with donors. It is not an institution that's a blanket a facilitation of granting. We will do that if that's what you wish, but we do offer the services, knowing what's the greatest needs in the community. We will seek out other charities if you request that from us, and we allow you to have as much philanthropic advising as you require. So next slide, please. There are many ways to give. We work very closely with advisors. We encourage you to engage your advisors in, in any of the philanthropic decisions that you make. As you see here, we, we have several different types of giving and um, I am now going to end my session and my talk on, on the Jewish Foundation. And thank you all very much for the time that you've joined us. We are going to start by going through some of the questions that have previously been submitted and time permitting, we'll get to as many as we can. 
Before we address these questions, I want to extend a special thank you to Petri Canada, who they themselves have been wonderful partners in so many large and wonderful gifts to the community through UJA and the Jewish Foundation, and who themselves are very generous corporate sponsors. So I will now ask the first question that we had submitted. I'm going to read it verbatim. I've heard that you that you can utilize the flow that you can utilize the flow through shares strategy personally and through a corporation. Is there a difference? And does the strategy work with passive income? Robin, do you want to start with that? Sure. Yes, absolutely. It's personal, it's uh, corporate, whether it's for active, whether it's for passive, you know, CEE exploration benefits are typically used for personal donation, while CEE and CDE benefits are for uh, corporate uh, donors. We've seen a huge growth in the last five years of corporate donations, primarily because personal donation has an AMT limit, but corporations have no limitations, so the magnitude of their gifts are usually quite large. Just, uh, if I could just add on to that, um, that, that's why planning becomes so important. When, when you look at this, it's not just how you get the lowest tax cost, although obviously that should be a factor, a consideration, but you also have to consider where is the cash currently available? Where do you wanna make that donation from? And how does it fit your overall objectives given everything else that you've got going on? Uh, and, and that's where the strategy, the plan becomes so important. Yeah, amazing. We have another question. How often of these, are these investment opportunities out there in any given year? Again, Robin, do you want to start? <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, it's a great question. You know, it really varies, right? Uh, we've had robust uh, last two years and it's a market. So of course it's going to, you know, be subject to fluctuation 2017 18 uh, you know there was less availability institutional buyers were focused on crypto and cannabis and now we've seen uh, you know with gold prices being as high as they are battery metals being high interest um, but you know it's ebbs and flows the biggest thing that we find sometimes is don't as donations Donors are usually waiting until the end of the year very often to be giving their gifts, whereas issuers like to come to market very often in the first half of the year in order to get their spending done. So we've seen a lot. We've seen three to four very large deals already this year. So Saul was like point on when he talked about planning. Once your advisor determines that this is something that is suitable for you, don't wait. We've had many a time when everyone's tried to time the market with their donations and found themselves with no flow through shares for that year. So it's ebbs and flows. And if it works for you, participate as soon as it's suitable. And then also you can be building your, your DAF in order to start uh, contributing to your charities of choice right away. I totally agree, Robin. You know, as I mentioned earlier, ten thousand dollars is the beginning of a DAF. So if we don't know when the flow through shares deals are going to be available, it's a wonderful way to build up. Start young, build up early, um, and it's like a bank account that you can use for the future because of the flexibility. If you open it and you change your mind along the way, you can distribute it out. It, it does belong to charity as soon as you've given that that donation to the Jewish Foundation or other charities, you get your tax receipt. So you can't take it back for yourself, but you can certainly give it away in different pieces or in its entirety to other charities if, if the foundation is not for you. But we found that it, starting, it, starting it small and building it up is, is usually very rewarding for families. Yes, and we've experienced that personally and professionally. You know, we have DAFs and uh, we found that by utilizing flow through shares, the magnitude and the size of our DAFs grows really, really quickly. So we have another question here and it is, how does CRA view flow throughs? What are the possible downside risks? I know that we covered a little bit of this Robin and Sol, but perhaps you want to just address it again. Well, well, do you want to? Yeah, sure, I'll, a, I'll start with this start? one and, and yeah, give a little bit of an overview here. Um, obviously a very important question. So when, when CRA sets up their rules and introduces new regulations, it's usually with a policy in mind, something that they're trying to achieve. So when they, for example, set up a donation tax credit, they did that to try and encourage the public, you and I, 
to make those donations and make the tax after tax cost to us a little bit less, which will help us donate more. That was the intent of setting up a donation tax credit. Along the same lines, when you look at the three examples that I gave you, the donation of public company shares or flow through shares, CRA have set up rules specifically aligned to allow these transactions to happen. So in effect, it's with their blessing that they've, they've set this up and allowed the community to take advantage of it. Now, they've also set up specific rules that you have to abide by in order to go through this transaction and make sure it fits into what they had anticipated, what they had conceptually looked to setting up. So when it comes to flow through shares, CRA has regulations or code specifically addressed, uh, addressing this type of share. They uh, specifically allow it and they specifically look to you following the rules or, or their guidance and setting it up and moving it through the transaction stream. So it's been there for a long time. CRA is very aware of it. And what is key to me, if I, if I look at it from a personal uh, perspective, what's key to me is the benefit ultimately goes to the charity. It does not ultimately go to me, or at least that's the way I think of it. At the end of the day, it allows me to contribute more to the charities. And one point would be CRA doesn't have to then help support the charities as much. Uh, they look for the public to doing that. So this is not a new, it is not a, a tax avoidance transaction. It is something that CRA has set up for you, expects you to be able to capitalize on. And they also expect you to follow the rules and make sure it's documented properly. Robin, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, you know, flow through financings for charitable purposes are just that. It's to fund the charitable sector. When you saw the last couple of years, what had transpired during COVID with a lot of charities, you know, how, um, how donations were down. And you look at the magnitude that this has grown. You know, um, CRA is not fussed with this. And the reason is because it's for charitable purposes. They know that it's funding the um, the Canadian charitable community, but like anything else, we stick to the rules of of which that they are governed by. The CRA rulings that we've had since uh, 2007 have had a couple of reiterations, and the last one being in 2012. But it's A to B to C, and their goal is also to protect the charity. So when you look at a cash flow summary and you look at the charity cash flow portion, you know the fees are paid by the donor primarily so that there um, is no net cost to the charity and they're not encumbered. So it's very important to recognize why they're not fussed. And the reason is um, because funding the charitable sector, if this would be removed at this given time, it would be, I think, quite detrimental to the charitable sector. And I think, Robin, one of the questions that we, we are often asked is, will CRA change these rules and, mm -hmm. and block it on a go forward basis? And, you know, look, they need to raise revenues right now. And, uh, you know, that, that's a different issue altogether. But to change these rules as they've set them up would impact, as you say, the charities more than they would impact the individual. What it would effectively do is take away a, a, a structure that we use to contribute, and it would put much more of the burden on the charities or on the donors. Yeah. And any uh, and any transaction that's already taken place is is grandfathered in. So what's also important is you know we're going to be subject to changes no matter what as time goes on. Taxes will never go down, but it's important to be involved in gov government relations and be looking at consistent strategies working with CRA in order to enable this process to keep going. Because there were changes in 2010, and we did have to go back, and we did have to go back to CRA and look at an additional. Uh, portion to add in order to continue the reduction of, of after-tax cost of giving so that it's still feasible for, for donors to participate. We have one more question, which I actually love. Um, and the question is, what, why, why would we not open a donor advice fund? Are there any pitfalls? And yeah, I'm delighted to start with this. Um, it is, it's a no-brainer is really what I want to say. If you decide to open a private foundation, you have to go to an expense. It, it varies, but it's approximately $10,000 in legal and professional fees. 
you need at least one, two, probably three million to start the private foundation. And you really have had to make up your mind because to go flip flop after you do that um, might be costly for you. So there's no downside. You can end up opening your private foundation afterwards if you open it at the Jewish Foundation, but I feel like you won't make that choice once you've had the experience and journey of, of being with um, a community foundation. So um, the fees are low. The administration fee to open a donor advised fund is 1% up to a million dollars. From one to 5 million is 0.75%, five to 10 million, 0.25% and over, sorry, 0.5% and over $10 million, 0.25%. We know we're the lowest, we're not in it to make money. Um, it's an administration fee that, that manages to allow us to send out thousands and thousands of grant checks on all the time and administer and steward your funds to the best of our ability. So I, um, I think donors have had a very wonderful experience opening funds at the Jewish Foundation. Um, and I think that we're out of time in like a minute or two. So we're gonna thank you so much for joining us. We sincerely appreciate your interest in this topic. Hopefully we've shed some light for you in terms of your next steps which we really believe and we encourage you should start with your advisors, your accountant, your advisors. If you'd like any more information or have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to be in touch with us. Our contact info is here. You can reach out to anyone at the Jewish Foundation. It's run by an incredible group um, of professionals headed up by Brett Henry. And um, we're, very, um, we're very happy to have been here today and thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Rahman. Thank you, Janice. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.